What's up guys, Woody here, back with another new to Mythgar video, and this one is one I've been working quite hard on over the last couple of days. Uh, and by what I mean by hard is making sure I get the notes and points down I want to share with you guys, because this one is all based on deck building. And it's probably become my most requested video I've done through discords, or through streams I've done, or through just other um, video um, comment sections, or... or where people have commented on other videos asking for deck building. I said we're going to come, I said it's going to, but we're going to do it, and people have uh, have been saying that they're looking forward to it. So I wanted to make it as informative as possible. Now here's how it's going to work. We're going to build three decks together. We're not going to play the decks, there's not going to be gameplay. Uh, we're going to build three contrasting decks. We're going to build a mono red deck, because it's nice and cheap to build, and most of you will probably have the cards to, to make this deck. It also shows how um, a mono red's um, mana curve will look when it comes to deck building. We're then going to build a tribal deck together, being Valkyries. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'd like to be able to teach you what tribal decks mean and, and how we can build tribal decks. And then we're going to build a tri-color deck together and tips about when it comes to, to tri-color deck building. Now, I am not the best deck builder in the game, guys. I've got lots of experience building decks. I like making weird and wonderful quirky decks. I'm not a bad deck builder, but there are definitely better deck builders out there than myself. The idea of this isn't to me show off, oh look, I can deck build. It is to go through the process slowly, to, to, to share with you how I deck build, to share with you the thought process I have when I'm deck building. Some, and even if you can take one or two tips from this and go ahead and make your own decks, then that's that's all I can, that, that, that makes me so happy. Now. The best advice I have, guys, is to to deck. A lot of people will just go to something like Mythgard Hub, which is a great website and a great resource. But when you make a deck, you start learning its strengths and weaknesses, and you start and then playing around with it. It means you're adjusting and you're learning so much more of the game by adjusting that deck. So when you come across other decks, you can start thinking, "Well, I'm probably going to run this because I know it does this," and you know that because you've built the deck. Now. You don't have to be a great deck builder to start deck building. It's as simple as that. You can just make a deck, jump into casual, and play around with it. Jump into PvE games. Does it feel smooth, okay? And there's there's three main questions you want to be answering or asking once you've made a deck. One, is it doing what you're aiming it to do? For example, if it's an aggro deck, is it winning or is it at least depleting their health by turn six, turn seven? If it isn't, it's not aggressive enough. Two, um, is does the deck feel clunky now what i mean by clunky is are you never having a play on curve in terms of you get to three mana do you never have a, a, a three cost card in hand or a four cost card in hand are you always mana deficient so you're not you're playing two drop cards on turn four because you never have those cards in hand and that's what i mean by clunky does it not feel like it kind of flows all the way through and three does the deck feel fun to play now that's a bit of a looser one because fun isn't necessarily the most important thing when it comes to deck building. It just has to be good. But especially when you're starting your deck building journey, fun is very important. You're not going to have fun in the game if you're not enjoying playing your deck. Is it fun? Is it weird and wonderful, quirky? Is it fun because it's winning? It doesn't matter. Is it fun, okay? So is it is it not clunky? Is it hitting the archetype you want it to hit? And is it fun? That's what we're going on. But anyway, enough of the whole kind of intro. Let's jump into it. Now, this video might be slightly longer than previous ones I've done purely because the um, the fact that we're going through three decks. But I try and keep it as punchy as I possibly can. So, new deck. The first one we're going to build, guys, is a mono red deck. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly name it. I'm just going to go, uh, we'll just go red for now. Then if you want to, you can change the material and all things like that, okay? So, this is our red deck. Now, what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to jump across the other side uh, through, through the means of teleportation. But dang, there we go. The reason I've done this is, you'll see over here, this is where your deck is displayed, or your, the list of your cards is displayed. And um, and then if we click on this little panel here, it brings up our, um, our, our mana bar, or our, sorry, our mana curve, which at the moment obviously is empty. Now, you can, ho you can hover over the bottom and it tells you what they are. These flag things on the bottom here are enchantments. These little um, cup things are artifacts. Swords and minions, and the weird little symbol at the bottom is spells. That's important to know as we go further. So, first deck we're making is mono red. We click on the red gem down the bottom, and now we have the and now we have the red card. Don't worry, hovering over that is going to make give people nightmares. Orphium isn't in this deck. Don't worry. Uh, so, mono red. I want it to be aggressive. I'm making an aggressive deck. What does that mean? That means I need lots of plays early game. I need ones, 
twos, and threes. They're my most... Turn four. My first four turns are my most important turns when it comes to this deck. Now, I need spot removal. In other words, I need to clear lanes to make sure my minions can swing. So I need ignition. I'm going to be putting four ignitions in the deck. You can see now it's, it's, it's increased on my spells over here. I now have four spells in the deck. And my, and my one drop mana has gone through there, okay? So I've now got a one drop. I, st I, I haven't got any way to do damage with a one drop in terms of... I can damage with two with, uh, by two with ignition, but I haven't got a minion to put on the board. Well, this guy's got life tap. He's a two, he's a one drop. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to be putting four of these guys, Digori Pups, in the deck, okay? We're going down now. And, okay, aggression. Rush is a keyword I want to be using here. Rush is a great keyword because it basically means there's no summoning sickness. I can play a minion, bang, I can swing straight to the face. So I, I all of a sudden I'm going to think, well, rush is, a, rush is definitely a keyword I want in an aggressive, aggressive deck. So if I type down in search rush, I now see all the cards that have rush. So yes, I want Darren Trapeze and I want to be able to find them. So I'm going to have four of them. I want to be able to find, I want one of these cards in my hand, turn two. Again, turn three, I probably want one of these cards in my hand. Not a probably. I definitely want one of these cards in my hand, okay? Panic Raid is one of the best free drops in the game. It's Rush, and I get card draw. Well, I'm going to be burning from my cards very quickly because I am aggressive deck. I'm burning and I'm playing. If I don't have card draw, that's going to be bad. So, okay, I need three of these in my deck. And then I go down here, Rush, Overrun, 4-1. Yes, I definitely need these in my deck, okay? There's my Rush now. We come to someone like Dashing Ringmaster. Yeah, it's a very good in, aggress in an aggressive deck. But if I think about this, okay, I give other minions rush um, when I play them, four drops. It's only a, a 2 1. So if I play this on turn three on curve, which is when I'm aiming to play it, then I've lost out on free damage to the face because this is a slow play. If they end up removing this, I've just missed out on free damage to the face. And that means now I'm the turn behind. And being a turn behind in an aggro deck is not good because that means that they're starting to build up their mana pool and we don't have a big late game. We don't win by turn 7 normally with a mono red deck, maybe turn 8. We're probably going to lose the game. So Dashing Ringmaster, I would say, is more of a mid-range red card despite giving other minions rush purely based on the fact that I want to be playing Wyvern turn 3. Okay. So we're not going to put Ringmaster in, in the deck. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to delete these. Rush keyword, and we go back to our race. Okay, so we've got our, our mana curve here. We can see our mana curve down here. One, twos, and threes, and fours are going pretty well. So we, we scroll down, and we look at Fire Song Prodigy. Do you know what Fire Song Prodigy? It gives me more ignitions in my hand. That's never a bad thing. That's more damage I can do here, okay? So, like I said, these aren't looking to be the best decks going. I'm just trying to make an example of how I would put a deck together. Now, I need to make... I need to be able to remove minions as well. Crimson Pact. Maybe it's not the best card, but if we do get to turn 5, turn 6, and they start playing bigger units, and I need to get that, that death, I need to get that kill, maybe having an ability to remove a minion is very good. So I'm going to put in two Crimson Pacts. Now, Flecky Huntress has... Flecky Huntress has Alpha Strike. Meaning she does damage first. That's great. And when she awakens, she's got more life tap. Well... Life that's gonna be great in this deck because I'm going to be very aggressive early early game. But if they start doing damage to me, I need a way of trying sustaining myself as long as I can to get the lethal. Uh, it's a two-two on turn three. That's absolutely perfect for me. We're gonna put three Fecky Huntress uh, into the into the deck. Now, I, as I said, one of the biggest things we struggle with mono red is card draw. I need to make sure I have cards in my hand. At the moment, by the time we get to turn four. The chances are we won't have any cards left in the hand. We're burning a card. We're playing a one drop. We're burning a card. We're playing one. Like on turn three, chances are I'm burning a card to get to four mana. And maybe I'm playing uh, a three drop and a one drop, meaning one card's left in my hand. If my opponent has five cards left in their hand, I'm really struggling. So I need to look at I Call Feast. Draw three cards and lose three life. That's not actually that bad because I because uh, we're playing mono red, the three gems, I can play this card. So I'm starting to think about. I now have card draw, okay? That's what I need. I'm going to burn out a card. So I'm going to be playing this. This also, if I think about the way my deck works, is I will be far ahead of them on life. I should be still around 20 when they are maybe around 10. So I can afford to give up free life. So I'm going to put free of these in because I definitely want to find the card draw. I need card draw. It's, just, it's as simple as that. Now, 
I look at my mana curve down here, and we can see my turn ones, I got eight cards. Now let's work this out. I can have 40 cards in my deck, okay? So eight cards in turn one means I have got a 20% chance of finding a one drop card in my opening hand, okay? That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Uh, well, I say 20% chance. I've got a higher chance now because I'm drawing more than one card. But I've got, uh, every time I, I, I draw a card, 20% of my deck is, is one drops. I should definitely be finding a one drop card now in my opening hand of six cards. Twos, I've got six. So Okay, so we're now looking at, okay, it's like 15%. I'm quite happy with that, 15%. Maybe I could add one or one or two more two drops in there. Freeze, my meat of my game now. I should, let's think, I should be getting them down to about 20 health now. Turn freeze when I can really start putting the pressure on. I can really start pounding them for the for the damage. I have got a, like, almost double. 40% of my deck is free drop cards. So I will definitely pretty much be able to play on curve. I've got equals, in terms of minions, I've got uh, Frecky Huntress, got uh, Iron One Belly, I've got Panic Raider. These are like, I've got just alone by minions that are free drops. I've got 10 free drop minions that I can find. Perfect. Turn four, we only have Wings of Abaddon. So we need to start thinking, okay, my late game is going to be a little bit slower now. It hasn't got the oomph, the punch I want this late game to have. So what can else can I add that is, is aggressive? Well, I want to try and keep this deck relatively cheap. So we're going to look across at Strigori Reaver. A Strigori Reaver, Alpha Structure, does damage first. Frenzy means it attacks twice and life tap. Well, being able to do four damage is going to be pretty, pretty big. And if I think about, okay, this isn't the best card, but if it can mean that I can play this and then play this the next turn to clear something and then get four damage with life tap, that life tap is going to help me going into turn five because it's going to help me secure some... Um, it's going to help me set up and also or secure lane advantage so I can get my minions through. So, okay... Dragori Reaver is going in. Okay, we're going to put three of them in as well. Now, realistically, I've got to think, am I going to be playing more than five drop units? If we go down to what the red bigger units are, this is a this is a, uh, a vampire card. Nope, this isn't aggressive. It's a big 9-9. Nine -nine. It's very slow though. Am I ever going to get the seven mana? Well, I want to be winning by turn seven, so probably not. This is a great card, but again... Do I want to be? I want to be winning by turn six. I don't want to play one card on turn six. I on turn six, I want to be able to be playing an Iron Worm Birdie one side and a Panic Raider the other side, nice and wide on the board, meaning that I can end up getting five damage to the face and draw a card. But I do. I will be getting to five mana. So I look at the five mana cards. While well, Magmatar deal three damage to a minion in the opposing three lane. This is great. I can play this next to my Iron Iron Belly Wyvern. And it will mean that it will potentially remove the card opposite and Wyvern will swing to the face. So I can get lane removal and I can get free damage to the face. That's what we need. So we're going to put two of those in there, okay? And I'm going to come across here and look at Dustwing Angel. Well, Agile's pretty good. If I've got a later game, if I'm dropping four, uh, four down with Agile, meaning I can swing past a minion, they if they play a minion with summoning sickness, I can get Dustwing Angel off. So that's that's a really big four damage late game for me could quite easily be lethal. So I want to be finding these guys late game. So there we go. That's our that's our free there. We look up here. We got one left. So I'm looking down here. Okay, what am I missing? I have six two drops. I have plenty of one drops. So let's go back to our two drops. Let's click down here on the number two. What red two drops can we add into the deck that are going to add a little bit of aggression or or allow us to to, to apply a bit more oomph to our game. There isn't really tons that we can we can add here. Okay, so let's go back to one drops because we, th these are our most important cards, ones and twos. We have we don't need any many more um, threes. Our fours are looking pretty good and our fives are looking pretty good. It's the early game aggression that we want. And then we can come up here and say, well, do you know what? Actually having an Iron Flesh Performer isn't going to be in the way. It's armored one, so they've got to do two damage to this guy if they want to remove him. Early game, that can be pretty good. It can really, really help sustain the deck. So he hasn't got rush. He hasn't got any aggression, like big aggression to him. So we're going to put in one of these guys. And now we can see here, I've got nine one drops. I've got six two drops, 15 three drops, five four drops, five five drops. And you can see here, it's completely dropped. I don't have a single six drop in, in the deck. I have 31 minions 
and nine spells. Now, 31 minions is important in this aggro deck because I want minions on the board. I want to be playing multiple minions on turn four, turn five, and swinging multiple minions to the face. I want to be doing as much damage to them as I possibly can. This isn't the most optimized deck. I've just thrown it together. But as you can see, I've gone through and I thought, okay, is there early game damage to them? Yes. Ignition can do two damage. Okay, Stagori Pups, two damage to them. I can I can do Iron Flesh Format can do two damage to them. Fire, um, sorry, um, Daring Trapezists gets two damage of Rush. Well, I could play this turn two. There's no way they can cover the whole board turn two. I'm guaranteed, if I have this in my hand turn two, to be doing two damage to them, okay? Maybe playing this means I can actually trade into another card to get Stragori Pup through. Why would I want to do that? Because this has life tap. So, okay, I, I've got I've got ways of removing early minions with Ignition, with Trapezist, to be able to get Pup through, okay? I'm going to start coming down. Well, my mid game, my, my turn three now, can have a Feki Huntress that by turn four can develop into a four damage life tap card. Wow, that's really that's really good. I have my card draw. I always need card draw in this game. You do not want to end up top decking in this game. If you top deck by turn four in an aggro deck, chances are you're going to lose because they're going to end up outmannering you and they're going to end up just playing a long, slow grinding game. You keep top decking, you're going to really struggle. I'm going to play Icor's Feast. I'm playing a full play set because I need the card draw. It's exactly the same as Panic Raider. Again, I've got six cards that allow me to draw cards, which is great. I've got three damage to the face on turn three. Brilliant. This card isn't great, but it's a threat. If it comes out and it gets an opening, I get life tap off it and I get four damage for four mana. That's what I want in, in an aggro deck. This has Rush. Again, a free opening here. This can be lethal. This card is so good at getting lethal. One, because the Rush. Two, because the overrun. They've got a 1-1 one, one minion on the board. Swing this to the face. Bang. I'm getting a nice free extra damage to them as well. Magmatar's lane removal and uh, Dustwing Angel is a good way of getting life tap and agile to try and set up lethal. I'm happy with the deck. Okay, I'm happy with the deck. What I now need to go is, what's our aim? What am I going to add in here? So, turn of seasons. Am I going to get benefit of this? Let's try and work this out. I have seven. I want to be winning by turn seven. That's my aim. Okay. So if we play turn of seasons, I'm going to get one double draw or off fall. Okay, I'm going to get heal minions by one. Wait a minute. A lot of my minions only have one health. So that's not very good. Gain one life. That's pretty slow in this deck anyway. I'm, I should be winning before they can kill me anyway. And then fragile. Well, that's really bad because that now means my my free two wyverns are now just, they can kill, be killed with one damage. So... Actually, I'm not going to get benefit of turn seasons because we're playing too aggressive. I'm not running enchantments, okay? Wait a minute, journey of souls because my minions are going to be dying a lot. I'm trading into other minions. They're going to get removed easy because they're weak. As by weak, I mean they have one, maybe two health. Well, this means actually, all right, I get less starting life, but I'm going to keep getting cards back in my hand. I'm going to draw a lot more cards over seven turns with journey of souls than I ever am with turn of seasons. So Journey of Souls is going to be my, my, my pathway. In terms of power, well, I have two choices here. I can go with Smite to get some chip damage away if I have any mana left over. But if I think about this, I've got quite a few early game cards that have Life Tap. And Life Tap meaning I get health back off that, which could really help me out turn 5, turn 6, when they start playing their bigger units. So maybe if I run Infuse, meaning I can play Stragori Pup, and next turn, if I haven't got a card I can play... I can put an extra one damage on them, meaning they now do three damage to the face, and I get three life to back. That's now a swing of six, which is pretty big, just off my one power. So I'm going to play Infuse. And so you have it. We have a mono red deck. We have card draw. We have early minions. We have mid minions. We don't have late minions because we're not aiming to have a late minion game. We have a substantial amount of minions over spells. Okay, we have spot removal with ignition. We have ways of dealing with stuff and clearing the lane so we can swing. Our power is going to allow us to add extra damage and maybe aim for that lethal if we need it. And our pathway is going to allow us to, to stop us burning through our hand too quickly. It's going to give us cards back in our hand. That is it. There we go. That's our red deck. Easy. Cool. That was a bit of a, a ramble. I went through it very quickly. Like I said, I'm trying to keep the video as punchy as possible but anyway that's how i would build a mono red deck guys next we're going to save this deck next we're going to move across to so we're going to a new deck 
And we're now going to go with a Valkyrie deck, a tribal deck. So if anyone's wondering what a tribal deck is, a tribal deck takes a, um, a type of card, like a tribe of a card, and you build a deck around it. In Magic the Gathering, it'll be something like goblins, or it will be angels, or it will be zombies, something like that. And you would then find all the cards that have zombie or angel or goblin written on them. And you'd build a deck with your main core of it building around that tribal um, keyword. Now, the reason they're good is because a lot of tribal decks play in to other tribal cards. Now, for example, um, if I go across to canines quickly, if you look at canines in this game, we have cards like Pack Trooper, which is has one one for each adjacent canine. Well, for a one drop that could build up to a free four that's damn amazing how many canine decks slow wait when i got a canine i got a canine i got a canine soldier canine soldier i got a canine soldier wow okay spirit can okay fair enough there's a lot of canines available and that's how i would build it okay we're going to look at valkyries so what i would do here is i would type in valks now not my, my whole deck isn't going to be just valkyries but my core i would say for like 30 cards of my deck, maybe 25 to 30 cards of my deck, over 50% of my deck is going to be Valkyries. I want to be finding these Valkyries. So what we're going to do is we're going to start looking across and go, okay, we know that we want to ramp up. Is this an aggressive deck? Am I aiming to win by turn 7? Well, let's look at the cards. I have one drop that's going to do 2 damage. I've got a 2 drop that comes out for 3-3. Free, free. That's very strong. Oh, we got a rush mechanic down here. My adjacent minions have rush. Oh, Road Queen. All my other Valkyrie minions have plus 1, plus 1. And then when an, when a Valkyrie dies, one of your Valkyrie dies, you gain 1-1. One, one. Okay, this is aggressive. Whenever my mi enemy plays an, a minion, I get 1-1 one, one on this card. That's absolutely crazy. Return all Valkyrie cards in the Boneyard back to my hand. That's, a, that's insane. That's crazy. Okay, but looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, this isn't as aggressive as what I would see from my red deck. My red deck has lots of rush keywords. And I'm looking at playing lots of small units and throw through. These guys here, I only have these two, two to two one drops. Restore free health to a minion, which seems very, very good. Or the swift and the two one. So what route am I going for? This seems like a more of a slow burn one. I'm only doing the one damage, but I'm looking at keeping other minions alive. It has Lurker to help keep this card alive. So I need to start thinking about what I want to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my, my Valkyries in the deck. I'm going to put in four... Frecky Scout. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to be finding a one-drop card. Okay, Valkyrie Tough. Again, it's a Valkyrie card. It's a free free for turn two. It's crazy. It has two blue gems, but I'm only going to be playing blue Valkyrie. I'm playing mono blue Valkyries in this to keep it simple for deck building terms. And I'm going to throw four of these in. I want to find this card turn two. I definitely want this here, okay? And then we can look at this here. Valkyrie Enchantment. So a two drop. Another two drop that Occupy Minion has plus two and the overrun. So wait a minute, I could play this on turn two. If I don't find Frecky Tough, I could play this next to this card. I could use the Swift Mechanic to move it across onto Demolition Speedway, opening up the... I could do four damage to the face on turn two. That's potentially more damage I could have done in my aggro deck. So, wow, okay. I want to be running the Speedway as well. So I want Speedway in the deck. Brilliant. Now, Rush is never a bad keyword. It is another Valkyrie, so it plays into my, my Valkyrie stuff. I want this to be more on the aggressive side than I do want it to be on the more mid-range side. So we're going to be going for the Rush. Again, it plays into the Valkyrie. I'm not saying you have to put every single Valkyrie card in your deck, but for the sake of this turn, I have the cards. I'm going to put it into the deck. Road Queen is a must. Look at this. It gives all my other Valkyrie minions 1-1. One, one. So let's just set up the example. I have a Freki Scout on the board. I have a Valkyrie Tough on the board. Turn 3, I play this. Okay, this now is a 3-2. This is a 4-3. They can both swing to the face. That's 7 damage I can be doing potentially on turn 3, depending on what my, min my opponent has played, with Road Queen on the board. And any time I play another Valkyrie, they're going to buff by 1-1. One, one. That, that is a must. Both of these going straight into the deck. Well, I'm going to lose minions. Frecky Scout's going to die. And maybe I'll trade Frecky Scout into a minion on purpose. Well, this grows by 1-1, one, one, and it's already getting a 1-1 one, one off Road Queen. I definitely need a full set play of these, okay? So I can now start seeing my mana curve is starting to go up slowly. Unlike you can see on my on the um, aggro list, where it was very much really big and a sudden drop-off, 
This one is starting to climb slowly. So we're not starting as fast, maybe. We've got four one drops. That might change. We have seven two drops. It's half of what we had in our red deck uh, at the moment, anyway. And again, we've got eight three drops. Again, half of what we had in our, in our red deck. So we're going to keep going. I have this, this Mythic, so we're going to throw Kara in there. She's a Valkyrie. She's very strong. And then I'm going to be looking across here. Valkyrie Enforcer, return a minion to uh, in your opposite lane to the owner's hand. Well, actually, if I have if I have a Kara on the board, now this is only a two-two. But if I have Kara on the board and they put an, a blocker down, maybe I could I could use this to bump that card back to hand. And remember, bumping a card back to hand that has ephemeral actually kills the card rather than gives it back to the opponent. So I'm not going to run a full play set of these because I don't think they're going to be the best card in this deck, but. I'm going to run three of them because my turn four plays, I want to be finding Kara um, and I maybe want to be finding other cards that aren't Valkyries we're going to look at in a minute. And then All Father's Horn. I give a standard action, refresh your mana, and yet, so wait a minute. I can give all my cards another swing to the face, potentially, and I get all my mana back? Well, yeah, I definitely want one of these. Do I, I mean, I'm going to run two of them. It's a Valkyrie spell. It doesn't play tons into it. Uh, and then this one here, Valkyrie Gods. If I really look now, we know pretty much every card minion in my in my drop area, it, sorry, in my deck, is a Valkyrie. I've got 20 Valkyries. So the chances of playing Ingrid and then returning all Valkyrie cards in my Bono to my hand, even if I get half them back, that's 10 Valkyries I'm getting back. I need to play this card. There we go. So I've got 26 cards on my mono blue Valkyrie list. That are Valkyries. I now need to fill up elsewhere. So what I do is I delete my Valkyrie keyword. I go across to this here. And I'm going to start just looking. What other cards do I want to play? What's going to work for me? So at the moment we haven't got an end game. Okay. That's where we're lacking. We have a nice little curve up here. But we haven't got an end game. We've got a six here. But we haven't got any fives. So what are we going to do? So we're going to go straight to our, our four, fives and sixes. And start looking at okay, what can we play that's going to, to add some oomph to this deck, okay? Now, if I look at this spell here, damage all opponents by two, uh, sorry, all any minions by two, and the opponent by two. Well, if I've got a full board, and I've got my Road Queen on the board, and my Valkyries are buffed up, and they've got lots, and they're playing, instead of playing red aggro like we just built, I know their minions are one and two health, mostly. So I could actually play Thunderclap and wipe the board with them. This is a really good spell. So, okay, this is going to go straight in there. And also, we're very heavy on minions and we are spells, so we have space to put spells in the deck. Now, if I go back to my val my, my my aggro list, what did I have my aggro list? I had I had minions, I had early play minions, I had spot removal, I had card draw, I had a mid game, and I didn't have a late game because I didn't want a late game, but I wanted a late game here. So what are we missing out of those? Well, I have early minions. Do I have spot removal? No. I don't have spot removal. So how am I going to get my minions through? Okay, so maybe I, I, I've got more space to spell on spell on spells. Thunderclap is a part of spot removal. It's bought more board wipe, but it's a four. I can't play this until turn four. And what if I play Kara on turn four? I'm not playing this until turn five. I want to be getting rid of minions earlier. So let's go back up. Uh, let's get rid of these here and find out, okay, I need spot removal now. We've identified that. What cards are, are going to do good for me for spot removal? So any of these here, this gives minion 2-1. It's not spot removal, really. Um, okay, let's go down here. Ice Spike. Piercing, give a minion stunned until your next turn and damage it by 2. Well, that's exactly the same as Ignition. Okay, it costs extra because it has stunned, but that's great. Like, this is brilliant. Okay, I, I need this card, so I'm going to be putting three of these in my deck. That's my spot early game spot removal. Spot on. Perfect, Okay. Scroll down a little bit more. Any more spot removal here that I, I like the look of. I'm going to go around and we go, okay, Forked Lightning. Deal one damage to an op to uh, the occupant of an enemy lane and two damage to adjacent lanes. So wait, this is for free cost. This is two ice spikes and two and a half ice spikes, potentially, if they're all lined up next to each other. Wow, this is really good. So I'm going to put two of these in my deck because that's my spot removal now. If I look at this now, I've just added five spot removal cards in my list. I mean, that's enough, actually. Five spot removal cards is going to be 10% of my... 10, no, that's, that's completely wrong. Five spot removal cards is 12.5% of my deck spot removal. I'm happy with that. So, I've got my early minions now. I've got my spot removal now. I've got my, my mid-game looks okay right now. Card draw. Ah, we don't have any card draw. So, again, having these lower units, we're going to burn for our hand really quickly. 
So now, what do I want to do? I need card draw. So how do I find card draw in, in blue? Now, you can just type in draw, and it'll come up for you, okay? Restore 5 minions to health and draw a card. Well, that sounds pretty good, but when I look at this, well, not many of my minions have 5 health. So, maybe is this going to be a bit of a waste for 2? Maybe, okay? Return enchantment owner to his hand and draw a card. Well, I, they have to be playing enchantments. I don't, I don't really like the idea of that. Occupy minion has, for 1 mana, place his minion on the top of its owner's deck and draw your next minion. Well, I, I don't... I don't really want that. Like, I'm drawing minions. I'm not... I'm putting a minion back to draw another minion. That's not good. Draw two cards. Oh, I haven't got to meet any... Any conditions of it. I can just draw two cards. Amazing, okay? We are going to put a full place... Uh, we're going to put three. Three brainstorms into my list. Now I have my card draw. I don't want to... I don't want to necessarily be... Be finding this as, as straight as I can. But on turn five... Playing this, actually, for two gems... Means I can still play... Something like a Valkyrie Tough and a Brainstorm on, on the same turn. So I can draw two cards. That's pretty good. I like that. Okay, so I've now got my card draw. Let's read on. Lurker, Breach, draw a card. Ah, it has to Breach. And then I come across it. Braggy Rune Singer. Add a charge and you get to draw a card and shuffle a card back in your deck. Okay, I'm not getting card draw per se. But what I am getting is I'm getting to cycle through my deck. I'm getting to move cards off the top that I don't necessarily want. Or if it's a card I want, I can put it back. This is just a really good card. Now, I know I want to still I want to keep these decks slightly budget, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to put this in the deck. It's a card draw. I would put it in the deck if I was going to build a Valkyrie deck anyway. Uh, and there you go. Now, I now have my card draw, and I have ways of finding cards. I want to find cards, and, and that's that's pretty important. So now we've got to go back to it, and we've got to think, okay, so we've got, we've got our early minions. We've got our spot removal. We've got our card draw. We've got our mid game. Our late game is still really, really lacking. So we need to go to our fives and sixes. Fives and sixes, we only have three cards left to spend. Now, we ideally, we want to be winning in this deck by, like, turn seven, eight. Um, it's not as aggressive as a mono red, but still, we have a lot of aggression early on. We have aggression with the Feki Scout. We have the aggression with the, the potential free damage to the face on turn three after the Summoner Sickness is worn off on Valkyrie Tough. It's huge. Okay, we got Fort Lightning to help clear our way. Road Queen means that, actually, on turn three... Valkyrie Tough can swing for 4-4 four, four to the face. Wow, that's amazing. If Feki Scout can get through as well with the Swift, that's 6 damage on turn 2 we're doing to the face. Now we're starting to think, okay, this is quite an aggressive deck actually. It's not flat out rush, 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 aggro, 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 but still quite aggressive. But what if I get stalled out? Well, how about Black and Jotun? It's only one gem, doesn't matter too much anymore because we're playing a mono colour. But 5 mana, I haven't got any other 5 mana cards in my deck. 6-6 six, six with Overrun. Wow. That's a big guy, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in three of these guys. That is big. I, I could go with this, but if I look at this here, this is a lot more defensive. Can only be played opposite an enemy minion. Fully heals whenever an enemy minion dies. So this is very defensive. It gets played opposite a minion. It has seven attack, four health, but it has a condition to it where actually I just want the six damage that I haven't. I can play the card where I want. Giant Stairway, giving free free to a minion is amazing, but... Maybe it's a bit slow. Maybe I haven't got many minions on the board. If I've, if I've only got two cards in hand, one's uh, a giant stairway, one's a, a Feki Scout, I, I want big units on the board. So I'm going to choose a Black and Jotun over my giant stairway for this list. Okay, Magnus is an amazing card. The only reason he's not in this list is we're keeping a budget, or to a certain extent. But I would run him. He's a, he's an, um, a Thunderclap with a body. Like, why wouldn't I run this guy? I would run this guy all day long. And we can go through, and then the other board removal we've got here is Cataclysm. Five damage to all minions and all players. That includes yourself and your own minions. But for what I want to build with this Valkyrie list, I'm pretty happy, okay? We've got, we can see our mana curve down here. We've got a bit of an early game. Our mid game is really looking quite nice now. Our turn two to turn four is really nice. Our, as we get into late game with like turn five, turn six, turn seven, we haven't got tons. We've got three minions there each. But I, I have... My mid-game minions are still strong, meaning my my ability to play like Road Queen and buff other Valks is, is pretty strong, okay? Valkyrie Enforcer can set up removals. Kara is a mid-game card, but she can get really big and really strong, and she's Valkyrie. So she comes out of Road Queen on the board. She actually is coming out at 6-5 before they've even played minions. So I'm pretty happy with where this is going. I could maybe drop an All-Father's Horn. Maybe I don't need two All-Father's Horn. 
and uh, maybe I could, for again, sake of the video, put a Magnus Force in here because I would play it if I was running this as, as a normal list. And now, all right, he's not a Valkyrie, but he's spot removal and he's a 4 4 body and he's a good mid to late game card to set up and clear minions uh, opposite lanes. So we look at this one here 26 units, 11. We can see how this is contrasted from our aggro. In our aggro deck, we had nothing in six. Uh, and we kind of had a really big spike up here, like a really big spike, and a sudden drop down here, and then nothing here. This is already more mid-range, because you can see it has a nice kind of little rainbow element to it. It goes up and it drops back down, which is nice and uh, nice and important for this deck. And it means that I have early game stuff, I have mid game stuff, and I have some late game stuff for this deck. And that's kind of what I'm going for with this Valkyrie list, and I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. So... That's that deck done. Oh, you've got to go name it quickly. You know, you've got, you've got to name your deck. You've got to name your deck. So we're going to go with Valks on that one. Save that. And then, oh, 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 nearly. Uh, pass and power. So I've got to think, is this ag as aggressive as my um, as my aggro list? Well, we know it's not as aggressive, but we still know it is quite aggressive. So turn of seasons, we don't have, like, if this, game, if this deck goes into turn 9, turn 10, we're probably losing. So I've got to think, are we going to get probably two cycles from turn of seasons? Meaning we're going to draw one additional card. I do actually have minions in here that are slightly more substantial with their health. So gaining one health uh, to the minions in summer is not that bad. And gaining one life, again, isn't really that bad. So maybe this is okay, but the fragile still concerns me. Because I'm only getting two cycles from turn of seasons. Which is, is fine, but I feel like actually going to Journey Souls again is going to be better. Because... Freki Scout can get removed very easy. Okay, we can have Valkyrie Tough is, is a big card, but it can get removed. Not easy, but it can get removed. Okay, we have other cards that we have lots of smaller cards up to turn three. The chance I can get removed. If we can be drawing additional card on turn two and turn four because they're removing our cards, we've already outplayed the turn of seasons in terms of card draw, which is by far the best element of turn of seasons. We want cards in hand. We don't have tons of card draw here. Brainstorm is the only thing that's given us cards in this deck. But what we do have is we have the ability with Journey of Souls to be able to get cards back in hand, which is pretty important in this deck. So I'm going to go Journey of Souls. Now I need to think about what I'm going to be doing here. Do I want to go for an aggressive route? If I want to go for an aggressive route, chances are I'm going to play Infuse. I want to get that extra damage. But if we look at our red aggro deck that had a lot of life tap, that's getting an extra boost off Infuse. This deck isn't getting an extra boost off Infuse because it's, yes, we're doing one extra damage to the face, but we're not taking a life tap. Now, I actually want to be able to create openings in this deck. I want to be able to, to be a bit more mid-rangey, to, to manipulate my opponent by moving my minions and by, by focusing on, on breach attacks and forcing them to play around my plays. So for that, I'm going to go with Impel. Impel will allow me to move cards around Fecky Scout, I can use a Swift and Impel to move across three lanes in one turn and get two damage to the face. Two damage doesn't sound like a lot, but it can really put pressure on your opponent. And if you keep chipping away with two damage over the first three turns, that's already for potentially six damage you're going to get done to the face, which is something they have to deal with. And having the ability with the Impel is all, always going to help out with that. Okay? It also means you can actually save some minions by moving minions around. Also think about we're running Valkyrie Enforcer. So let's say they play a card opposite um, Kara. I can move Kara across with Impel. I can play Valkyrie Enforcer to bump that card back to hand. Meaning now that Kara has a clean swing to the face. So I'm going to go with Impel on this list. And I'm pretty happy for now. I've not tested it out. But you know what? It's mono blue. I've got 26 Valkyries in the list. I feel like I've got spot removal. I've got my card draw. I've got my early game, I've got my mid game, I've got a little bit of late game. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to leave that exactly as it is and we're going to move on to our final deck. So our final deck is going to be a control style deck. And what we're going to do is we're going to be doing three colours. And this was inspired by a deck that I made with Semper. Um, and we're going to go with those exact colours. Now what we're going to be doing down here is we're going to be using red, sorry, blue, yellow and purple. Now, control decks, how do they differ from aggro decks and how do they differ from my, my Valkyrie deck? Well, I don't have an early game, really. My early game isn't aggressive. I'm not putting pressure on my opponent here. I'm looking at pressuring them on the late game. I'm looking at grinding them out. I want them to top deck. I want them to burn through their cards. I want to get to turn 7, 8, 9 and then start dropping big units 
and getting them scared, getting them worried, not having them any way of dealing with that. To do that, I need to be able to one, spot removal or be able to remove their minions and two, dictate their play, control where their cards are going, okay? So what I'm gonna do here, because I have tri-colors, I need to think about one thing very in particular here and that is gems. Gems now become an issue in a tri-colored deck. Anything with one gem is our friend. Two gems can work, okay? Tri gems or triple gem cards, if I can try and find one now, are extremely dangerous slash clunky in a in a, a tri card deck. This basically means on turn six, over like 50% of my gems have to be blue, meaning I can only play one of the other color and two of the other color. Two, like say one yellow and two purple, meaning my yellow play is already gonna be behind. So for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna keep this one budget. I'm just gonna go as I would build it. So I'm gonna start going through my key cards. What are my key cards here, okay? Do I need anything here that's turn one play? Well, I don't think I do, to be honest. I feel like there's key plays here. These are all a bit aggressive and, and, and don't sink in what I wanna play. Fane, however, Fane fully heals when an enemy minion dies. I need to include this card in my deck. They they can't remove it normally turn one, or sorry, turn two, turn three, because they don't have the free damage to remove it. And if they're swinging one ones and two twos into it, they're just trading for nothing. Fane just stays alive. Uh, and there's also a card later on we're going to talk about that links with Fane that is super. So we're going to add three Fanes to the list. Three Fanes is going to be very important. Okay, this is where we're, this is where we're going to start really with our minions. Um, we want to get our minions. Do you know what we're going to throw four in? Because we want to get our minions rocking uh, and rolling with um, on turn two. And again, it's only one gem. So we're going to come down. Well, as I said, I want to control what my opponent does. So Ice Spike is going to be a great card because I can not only for removal, let's say I play at the end of the game, it stuns upon opponent. They can't swing next turn. I've stalled them out for another play. I'm dictating what they're doing. So I'm going to put two Ice Spikes in the deck. Now, when I'm playing, when I'm making a tri-color deck, you have to be careful of your cards in deck. Ideally, you want to be aiming around about 12 cards per faction if you're going for an even spread. And then at sprinkle in the final four cards of whatever you want, basically. So, okay, we've got Ice Spike for some spot removal already. And we come down here. Now, cards. I need cards. Like my, my whole game plays off me drawing extra cards. There is a card we're going to get to later on which allows me to do that. So I'm only going to put one Brainstorm in the deck for now. Because I only have five more slots for my blue cards. And I want to make sure I'm getting the right blue cards in, in this list. So I keep going down. Fork Lightning. Do you know what? Fork Lightning could actually be really good here. Because... Fork Lightning is going to allow me to, to potentially remove several minions. So I'm going to play one Fork Lightning as well. We only have four spaces left, so I've got to start being careful. And we're only at three mana already. But if you look at these, apart from Brainstorm, they're all single cost gems. Our friends when it comes to tri-color decks. Now I've got to look at down these. Road Queen's not going to work for us. Sea Haven is, I mean, the Agile Armor too. It's a little bit, it's, it's almost too slow for us. We... This is a, a play where we're not messing with our opponent. This is a, an example of, it's helping us out, it's not it's not stopping our opponent. And that's kind of what we want to be doing. We want to be stopping our opponent. We want to be, we want to be really shutting down on our opponent and making sure our opponent is, we're dictating their play, we're forcing what they do, okay? But we also want to be finding cards and that's where Braggy's going to come in. So we can get a minion frenzy, so we can get some aggression. We play this late game of other cards we're going to put in this deck. This can be devastatingly powerful. But we're also finding the cards we want. And in a control deck, wow, that is so important. Finding the cards we need is so important. So Braggy's going to go straight into this deck. And keep coming. Now, Kara is, again, she's a Graukri. She doesn't fit this deck. She's almost too aggressive. It, we, we, again, we're not manipulating what our opponent's doing. Uh, enchantments we're pretty much staying away from for now. Now, Rune of Denial. Rune of the Nile is a spell destroying an, an enchantment and give a minion suppressed in an enemy lane. Why do I want to play this? Because as I said, and I'll stress back guys to why this is so important, uh, what we want to be doing is messing with the opponent's play. This, If my opponent plays a, a, an enchantment, this is a great removal. It's probably the best enchantment removal in the game. I'm, I'm forcing them to adapt to situations by playing a controlled deck. I'm only going to play one because... I, What's the chances of my opponent's playing of enchantments? I'm not going to build a deck that completely focuses on enchantment removal because I'm playing into one type there. And a control deck needs to be able to control with enchantment decks, needs to be able to control against artifact decks, needs to be able to control against 
aggro, against other control decks, against mid-range decks. So having one tech in there is going to be very important for my uh, enchantment removal. And Thunderclap is board wipe. Like, why wouldn't this ever go in a control deck? So we're going to put both of these in there. Now we're already at our 12. We do know we can go over slightly. And I feel like I want a little bit more oomph from blue. So we're going to add two more cards. We're going to add Magnus because it's another Thunderclap. So we've now got three cards can potentially wipe a board or set up a board wipe anyway. And I want one more big unit to really put pressure on. Now I've got to think, okay, well this is this is too expensive. Seven costs, it's a, it's a lot. I want to be playing a little bit bigger units a little bit earlier. I could be running something like Jotun. But do you know what? I'm going to be going with Hyperborium. It's got the overrun, which Jotun has anyway. It's got more life, and in a control deck it allows me to actually keep that it might stay long alive for one turn longer which again di dictates my opponent's play it makes me makes them force about where they're going to play the next card are they going to deal with hyper boring are they going to give me the free attack so we're going to put one hyper boring in there we now have 14 blues in this deck so moving on to yellows 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 so one drops we haven't got any one drops yet and we definitely want one drops if we look down here we have a card maze of i always say this one wrong uh Iyatiku, I'm going to say Iyatiku, apologies if I got it wrong guys. So wait, this allows me to draw a card. Well, I need card draw, I'm in a control. Part of a control deck is I want to have more cards in my hand than my opponent. I want to be laughing when it gets to turn 8, turn 9 and being like, oh you have one card in hand, wow, I have 7 or 8 cards in hand, deal with that. So I'm going to play a full play set of maze. I want as many mazes as I can find, okay? We have a full play set of our turn 2 card that we really want from, from blue. No different here. I want a full play set of my turn uh, one card from yellow that I want. And keep going down. And we want now that we, 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 we still want cards that are going to mess with our opponents. Okay, That are going to force our opponents to do set things. Now, Yahui can only take two damage per combat. So, he's going to guarantee pretty much to stay around for... Well, if he stays around for one turn, only one turn, then he's going to trade into two minions... Always going to burn a spell out by hand and the minions attack to remove. So he's not the most strongest card, but he's going to force my opponent to, to burn cards, to play cards, to swing into cards, to play spells, to get rid of them, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to put two Yahoois in the deck and come down a little bit further now. And uh, we're going to look for, okay, if I come to Meso Libre. So Meso Libre comes out at a free four for free mana. It's two gems, so it is a little bit clunky. Playing this guy on turn three is going to be hard. So I need to make sure I've set up the yellow gems. However, I can stun the opponent in the opposite lane for the whole of its next turn, which is amazing. It can, I can deal with threats completely here. I'm going to want three of these in my deck. I want to be finding this turn three, turn four, and being able to play it turn three, turn four. Okay, as we come down a bit further. Now, our spot removal was our Ice Spike so far and our Fork Lightning, which we're running free of. We need more spot removal when it comes to a control deck. And if I look at Vicious Cycle, destroy a minion and it's controller. So this isn't damage a minion. This is straight up remove it. I can just get rid of a minion. If they turn six, they play a Hyperborean of their own. Yes, I'm letting them draw a card. But if I'm playing my deck correctly and I'm drawing cards and I've got a hand advantage over them, letting them draw another card maybe isn't the end of the world. But I'm removing a 6-8 for free mana. That's incredible. I'm going to have two Vicious Cycle in this deck. We come down further. Wonder Drug. One the drug, gain four life and draw a card. Well, that's good as it is. Already gaining life means again I force my opponent to make more plays. But wait a minute, if I read the next part, you, if you have seven or less life, double this effect to eight and draw two cards. We already know that I want to have more cards in my hand than my opponent. I want to grind them out. Gaining seven life, sorry, gaining eight life when I'm close to death is huge. It puts me back like over halfway to where I started the game. And if we're playing this turn 7, turn 8, turn 9, my opponent is already burnt out of cards. They've then got to try and find an additional 8 damage. And I've managed to get card advantage over them again because I've drawn I've managed to draw two cards. This card has to go in this deck. Absolutely has to go in this deck. Uh, and we're gonna scroll down a little bit further now. Now, there are stuff like artifacts like Alarma Ring that I could play. Uh, all minions have 1-1. One, one. It's good, but it's very it's quite slow, and I feel in this deck. It's quite it's quite a slow card, and it, if, if we're playing against aggro, it's going to be too slow. I need to be able to control cards. It doesn't manipulate my opponent enough for me to put a Llama Ring in the deck. Um, so we're going to go further. 
Misanthropia. Give all minions blight free. Well, this is quite simply the best board removal in the game. Because it gets past warded, it just wipes cards out. It does it over time, so if they've got a 9-9 on board, it's going to take you three turns for that card to go, but it's going to go down each time. But it's a great way, if they're playing aggro and you're slow, think about how slow our, tar our cards are turns starting to be, then dropping this actually is going to allow us to do a lot of damage. There's one big catch to this though, it has three yellow gems. I need to weigh up. Is this card a must play in this deck? Because I need to try and find a way of getting three yellow gems, turn five, turn six, to be able to play Misanthropia. If I think about the ability to wipe an entire board, well, that is the ultimate control. That is the ultimate way of me completely dictating what my opponent is trying to do. So I'm going to run one of these for now. I'm not going to run two. I'm going to run one because the multiple gems. And I don't want to end up with two in hand. I could burn one. But if I end up with two in hand, it's going to really struggle. We can already see over here, we almost have as many spells as we have minions. Running another one of these isn't necessarily going to be the best thing because we're going to have, we're going to be pretty much tying on, on on minions and spells, which isn't good. We're going to scroll down here. Now, we're going to look at these big guys here. Now, the twins are incredibly good. They give you two cards for six mana and they, can, they need to be dealt with, which is great. Again, they are... Three gems, but I need to weigh up how important are these cards. Well, I know for a fact these cards are absolutely killer. They're so good. So I'm going to run the Twins and Sapo. Because if we read Sapo, it's an instant spot removal. So if I just destroy one minion in the opposing lane, it comes out an 8-8 eight, eight, and it's warded. They can't play a vicious cycle on this, on this card. They can't just remove this card. The only way to get rid of it is by combat damage or with Blight. Uh, and I'm I'm now controlling them. On turn 7, if I drop Sapo on them, and let's think, I've already played Misanthropia, so I know I've got the three yellow gems. If I drop Sapo, and I remove the Hyperborea on their side, I've dictated their play, I've got an 8-8 eight, eight on the board now that they need to deal with. If I play in the middle, I can start playing wide, because they're going to start panicking about an 8-8 eight, eight in the middle. I'm dictating where they're playing, I'm dictating what they're doing, okay? Now, I said 12 per, per colour, we are already only got 10 left and we still got purple to go. So I need to think, or actually we have nine left because Sapo. So I need to think, okay, my, my purple is going to be, I need to start sacrificing my purple. By that I mean is I have four cards here that have three yellow gems. So I need to make sure, if I look over here, I can see that four, eight, nine. So I can already see that 17 cards in my deck are yellow. So I know for a fact I've got majority yellow. I have a high chance then to find my four, my three yellow gems. I don't have any three blue gem cards, but I have less of them. So my purples, I cannot have anything over a double purple card. I just cannot have it because I will not find it. I'm only going to have nine purples in the deck. So if we're going down here, we need to think, do we want any of these for turn one plays? Tim Zuin, okay, all right, it allows me to keep my big units alive, but... That is an element of control because I'm making them swing into my bigger units several times. I can play a healing potion on them, but I don't feel like it's enough. I don't feel like I'm al it's allowing me to do enough, okay? So I'm going to keep going down. And then if we look at something like Ghost in the System, do you know what? It's a one drop, two, so it's two drop. It's a one purple, a one gem purple card. Look at the top two decks of your opponent's deck. Pick one to go on top. And so I could genuinely stop down or shut down that turn three. If I see that and I play this, say, turn three or turn four, and I can put a three or four mana card on the bottom. Maybe they haven't got a three or four mana card in hand. So I'm breaking them from playing on curve. That's actually really handy. That's really powerful. So I'm going to put I'm gonna put one of these in the, in the deck. I'm not going to put two. I'm going to put one in the deck. Let's keep going down now. Okay. And see what else we can find. Now, items are great. These, these are going to give me my, my like different cards to, to play the items. But do you know what? I'm not overly fussed on playing these items. Also, it's two purple gems. Is the two purple gems, the clunkiness of this being a two drop, worth the item in this deck? No, it's not controlling enough, okay? So we keep going down, and we think, okay, we've got this here. Misfortune, give an enemy minion fragile free, so it takes three extra damage, and deal two damage to the controller when it dies, and this card returns to my hand. Well, so let's say they got a 4-4 four, four on the board. I can swing a 1-1 one, one into that 4-4 four, four with Misfortune on it. I remove that minion, and I do two damage to them, and I get the card back. That is the epitome of control. So I need to be running this card. 
again the issue here is it's two purple gems so i need to make sure i keep that in mind for other purples i'm running transform an minion with a mana cost of five or less into a two two electric sheep mo moving all of its abilities well yeah i so they play a big unit for five mana i can just turn it into a two two sheep and it has no but i need this card in my deck again so i'm only going to run one of them because look here 20 minions 14 spells we're already very heavy on the spells the idea is to always keep lots of cards in our hand however we need to make sure that we are that we that we're not only spells in hand we have minions to play as well otherwise we're going to defeat the idea of the control deck and uh, i keep scrolling down we're actually going to play we need some purple minions and we're going to play shinobi the smoke swift and stealth so stealth means i can't see what card it is now, if you play this on curve ahead of your opponent, it doesn't take retaliatory damage when attacking, meaning that you can swing this minion at an opponent and it won't take damage when you're attacking. So you, you can play a lane over so the opponent can't swing it. You can then use the swift to come across and remove a minion. Again, you're removing a minion by keeping a minion on the board. You're dictating your opponent where they're now going to play the card. So I need purple minions. It's only one purple gem. I'm going to put two of these in the deck. I only have space for four more purple cards in this list okay we're going to keep going down now if i look at my mana pool here okay i need to start thinking oh sorry my mana curve okay so we've got mid game our, our, our turn two and turn three are looking good we have got nothing for a late game really which is bad like in a control deck we need a bigger late game okay we've got sapo which is huge and we've got the twins which is great but i need more okay we've got we've got we've got a few but i i, I need more so i keep scrolling down i do you know what? None of these are feeling me. I need bigger cards. I need more of an end game. So I can start looking here and go, Tarragon. Okay, Tarragon. Adds, so it's a 5-6 that comes out. And I get to add a pearl in my hand, which for one mana gives any minion 1-1 one, one, and overrun. Wow, that could be really big late game. I can play this pearl on anything. We're going to put two Tarragons in the deck. And again, we're going to come across here now and, and look at these cards. Lantern Colossus. Well... Again, it's a 5-7, and I get to put an Immolation Cloak in my hand, which at the end of the turn, do two damage to the minions in the opposing three lanes, which is hugely controlling. I can completely dictate what my opponents are doing in the opposite three lanes. If they've got min like small minions there, I could trade into them. I, I can set up removals. This could set up Thunderclap. Let's say I put this Immolation Cloak out. I play Thunderclap to then get them all down on two health. Immolation Cloak on Lantern Colossus or any other minion potentially removes those minions it's so it's hugely i'm completely controlling what they're doing so i have to put two of these in the deck that's made my 40 card limit and then we're going to scroll down are there any other cards that we want well baku bogeyman is a six five your opponent you and your opponent's cards card and the opposing minions are suppressed this is a really really big card especially in control and i gotta think about am i gonna write a seven mana though i already have sapo for my seven mana i'm hyperborean as well I've now got Terragons and Lantern Colossuses. I've got more of an end game here already, we can see. Um, so I'm going to leave Baku Bogeyman, okay? I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look at this one last card and then Bulwark. Give a minion, zero, plus zero, plus two, and armor one, and draw a card. Well, I'm, I'm playing yellow blue, so this will fit my deck. It allows me to draw a card, which is already one of the main aims of our deck to keep card advantage. But if I think about this and go, is there a minion this will work really well on? Well, yes, of course. There's there's two minions this will work really well on. If I scroll back up here, and we first go to Yahui, Yahui is already can only take two combat damage. So they now have to be doing three combat damage to get the full two combat damage on it because the armor. Well, that's pretty good. That now means Yahui probably stays around for at least two turns, if not three, as just a blocker. And I get to draw a card off Bulwark as well. That's, an, that's a great play. Trade Yuhui trading into to minions is going to be huge. You're going to have five health with, with uh, armor. There's actually a better minion. If we go to back to the top and go Fane, well, fully heals whenever a minion dies. So now Fane is a 5 2 with armor. They need to be doing six damage to Fane to, for Fane to die. Anything less, Fane's going to chip away at them. I think if I play my Thunderclaps, if I play my Magnus to remove minions, Fane will always fully heal back to that 2-5. And I get to draw a card. That is a must-play card. So I'm going to go back down to Bulwark. And we're going to see... Okay, how many do I want to put in the deck? We're going to play three of these. Because we already have a lot of spells. Now we look across here. 
We've got 43 cards in our deck. We ideally want to have 40 for consistency of drawing. So what we need to look at now is, okay, where are our huge Malika? We, we've got way too many turn two and turn three cards, okay? We need it kind of consistently. This is great to have these cards here, but we, we want to lose a few of these. And we've got a lot, a lot of spells. So we need to lose some spells, and we need to look at our two and three. So we're going to go back to our two drops and our three drops in here, okay? So we look at our two drops here that are spells. Ice Spike's pretty good. Fork Lightning. Now, I've got to think, Fork Lightning, so I... I what are the chances of me actually having minions in the adjacent three lanes? It's got a big condition to it. It's one mana cost of an ice spike already, and it's only one cheaper than running Thunderclap. Thunderclap does two damage to all minions. They haven't got to be adjacent. Fork Lightning has to be adjacent. So do you know what? I'm actually going to bin off the Fork Lightning. I'm, I'm going to get that out of the deck. We managed to free up one space. We're going to come down here now and go, okay, what else have we got? So Vicious Cycle is a great spot removal, and one the drugs are great card as well. But do I need to be running two of both? Possibly not. Okay. So what can I what can I be removing? I'm going to this here. I'm only playing this when I have less life, really. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of one one the drug because Vicious Cycle. I'm probably playing t twice in the game anyway. I want to get rid of two units. There might only be once I want to play one the drug. And because we have the ability to draw so many cards as it is, the chance of me finding one the drug is pretty high. Although we're only running one of them, burning cards and cycling cards through your deck, I should be able to find one the drug. And if I find it at the right time, I can keep hold of it and get the full value of it, okay? If I get it early game, it's just going to be a burn target, and that's something I need to think about. Um, and purples, we do not want to be removing any purples. We only have nine purples in the deck as it is. So we need another spell. We have free cost yellows that we want to be keeping. So we need to think, okay, we're probably not going to be, be getting rid of any of our yellow cards. So come back up to our blues. We want our card draw from Brainstorm. Ruin Denial is our good tech. Magnus is too good. Hyper Boring is a good late game card. Ice Spike or Fane is what's going to have to go. Now, if I look at my two drops here, I have a lot of blue two drops. So maybe what I need to be doing here is actually going and getting rid of a Fane. That still allows me five cards between Fane and Yahui to be able to get a Bulwark on there and find them turn two. But that's fine. I feel like that's fine. If I look across now at my mana pool here, or my mana curve, we can see that I'm majority yellow, which makes sense because I have three drop yellow cards or three gem yellow cards. I have blue is only just behind yellow, which is fine because I look at blue. Blue has board, like three board removal cards a big boy that can come out late game. My card cycle, my cards here, a card that can get really annoying and controlling in a deck, and spot removal. Perfect. And purple is more there as a support. What's my purple doing? Well, Ghost in the System is is an, maybe an early card. It gives me more options to play cards early to stop me getting overrun early game. It allows me to potentially mess with my opponent's deck, exactly what I want to do in control. This is a spell that allows me to remove big units, and it's always going to cycle. Once I get this card, it never disappears unless it's banished. Metamorphosis is just a control card. I have two free drops. So I play these guys on curve. They can get very dangerous to start removing minions. And then I've got big units later on that actually give me items that will allow me to play them across the board and, again, dictate what my opponent is going to do to deal with them. And Bulwark is more card draw and gives me good amount of protection and armor on my Yahooies. I mean, Borg can go on anything. On Yahooie, it can go on on um, Fane. It can even go on Maze if you really wanted to, to try and keep Maze alive for longer. But anyway, that's that deck, guys. I'm pretty happy with how that deck has come out. And um, you can see the mana curve now is even more different. So aggro was really high across here, dropped down, and stopped here. Okay? Our Valkyrie was a nice, neat rainbow up and then back down. Control, this maybe isn't the best example of control because maybe you should have more focus units on the big units, but still, we don't want to get overrun uh, an early game. So having twos and three drops are important. And remember, a lot of these twos and three drops are spells anyway. So they're not min minions we've been playing on, on, on curve. They are spells. But you can see here, it's a lot more shallow early game. And it rises a little bit, but then it's consistently all the way across up to turn seven. Um, so we have minions have been playing late into the game, okay? And that's this deck building video, guys. I hope, I hope, I hope it's been helpful because I didn't know how to go about this, but I figured the best way of doing it would be going through building decks and giving tips on them, okay? When you're building a deck, guys, 
please make sure you're using your mana curve. You want to be making sure that you're, you're following it. Is it doing what I want to do? Remember those three things I said at the beginning. What is your archetype? This is control. Have I got spells to control my deck? Have I got card draw to make sure I'm controlling my opponent over in terms of I've got card advantage? Okay. Have I got minions that are going to keep other your cards or spells that are going to keep my minions alive or make sure my opponent minions die? Have I got a big meaty late game? Yes, I've got my twins. I've got Sapo. I've got um, Lantern Colossus. I've got Hyperborean. So I've got late game cards. I have board removal with blue. So I actually have a nice... I have sustainability with, with Wonder Drug. I've got a nice, con nice mixture of cards that are going to dictate my opponent's play. If I go back to my red deck, am I meeting the archetype? Have I got small minions that can get on the board and do damage quickly before turn four, turn five, turn six? Yes, I have lots of one drops, lots of two drops, lots of three drops. Can I play wide with aggro? Yes, I can play wide out over here. I've got card draw with panic raid. I've got card draw with I cause feast. I can keep cards in hand. I haven't got as much, but I want to be winning by turn six, maybe turn seven. And I go to my Vaux, more mid-range aggro, and I've got to be thinking, do I have early game? Yes, I've got a little bit of early game. I've got very nice turn two to turn four plays. I have some, some meaty units can come out. And if it ends up being a long game, I can hopefully find Ingrid to get all my Valks back in my hand. I have, I have sustainability through Ingrid. Yes, it's only one card that's giving me sustainability, but I have that sustainability. I still have the card draw with Brainstorm. But we went with turn of seasons on that one because we wanted to make sure that we, we, we've got the card draw Sorry, we went with um with Journey Souls because we made we wanted to keep the, the card draw on that. On this list, I would go with Turn of Seasons because we're gonna probably get at least two cycles of Turn of Seasons, potentially three. You're probably you're potentially getting to turn 12 with this list by grinding your opponent out. And I'd also go with Impel, allowing you to move across lanes. It means that you can block, it means you can open up breach chances. Again, by moving minions around lanes. You're dictating where your opponent's going to play the next minion. And that's what you want to do when you're making a control list. Guys, it's been an hour-long video. I really hope it's been helpful. Please don't say you watched it all at once because, God, this is a long video. But I wanted to sit down and really dive into deck building with you guys. Please say you learned something. If, you, if you've been here for an hour and you haven't learned anything, I'm super sorry. I, I've tried my hardest to make it as informative as possible. Okay? But please keep remembering those three things or those free items when you come to building a deck is it following its archetype use your mana curve okay if you're playing aggro and you've got really low on on turn one turn two it's not an aggro deck okay use your mana curve to make sure you're getting you're, you fit into the archetype you want to play okay use over here like we this is the one the most spells of course it's the one the most spells because we want to be controlling our opponent with spell removals with card draws okay with with sustainability through something like wonder drug we're going to have more spells in this list than we're going to have in an aggro list. That's natural. If my aggro list had more spells on this list, then it's not an aggro list. It was potentially not a very good aggro list because I'm not going to have many minions to get on the board and get aggro with. So you need to start thinking about that, okay? Point two, does it feel clunky? I would now take each of these decks, play them against uh, PvE first, go into Brawl, just play PvE. One or two games PvE. Am I finding the gems I need to find? Is it feeling fluid? Am I going for it? If I feel like, do you know what? This is fine. This is fine. Go into casual. It doesn't matter if you play against mithril players and you get absolutely thumped. Do not go into casual looking to win the games. Go into casual looking to pick apart your own deck. Go into casual and think, okay, I'm looking at, am I finding the gems that I need consistently? Am I finding the purple cards? My concern with this deck at the moment is we only have nine purples. Am I finding the cards to be able to play the nine purple cards? We only have two cards that, that have three purple gems. Sorry, two purple gems, and they are spells. My light game cards are only one purple gem. Am I still, by, by turn six, can I play Lantern Colossus because I found the purple card? That's a question I need to be asking myself, okay? And that's a question I, I would find out by playing casual. Once you've played a few games of casual, you maybe made some changes, you maybe adjust things here or there, maybe add some spot removal, remove spot removal, added card draw, remove card draw then go on to ranked and be like okay i'm ready to take this into the wild if you lose of it don't beat yourself up you learn so much more by losing games with creative decks than you do by winning games because you learn what the flaws are when i make a deck i will normally drop a whole rank a whole hundred rank points before i start climbing again because i need to learn how the deck works and the best way to see that is on on ranked but don't take it straight into ranked make sure you're doing your casual games make sure you're doing your pve games just to see if it doesn't feel clunky, if it feels smooth. Final one, is it fun? 
If you're not enjoying playing a deck, guys, don't don't try and beat a, a or flog a dead horse, whatever they call it. Give it up with it. And then simple as that. If you're not enjoying a deck, you're not going to enjoy playing it. You're not going to enjoy building it. You're not going to enjoy tweaking it. Drop it off. Play around with something else, okay? Go find a deck that you want to play, that you want to build, that you want to have fun with. That is such an important thing, okay? I don't build decks for the sake of building decks. I build decks because I'm like, cool, I want to make a deck. There's a, a Lost Boys idea that is around where I make a vampire deck that's a biker game. Valkyries, vampires. It's like the Lost Boys movie. Like, that's a great idea. Is it going to be competitive? No. Hell no. Is it going to be fun? I hope so. How do I know? I go and make the deck. I play it in PvE. I play it in casual. Would I ever play it on ranked? Probably not. But it's a deck that I can make and play around on there. As you get through the high ranks, you, you, you're you going to struggle with it if it isn't a deck that has a bit more sustainability or tightness to its deck building. But anyway, guys, that is the video. I'm sorry it's been a mammoth one. I need to go get a drink right now because I'm very parched. But it's been amazing having you guys here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments below if there's any other questions on deck building. Hit the thumbs up, guys, if you did like it, because I'm very nervous. It's a long video and people didn't learn anything from it. Hopefully you did. Um, until next time, guys, have a great day, morning, evening, whatever it is, wherever you guys are. And until then, goodbye.